Welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about the flight plan for analog space missions or just space missions in general. What is the flight plan? Basically defines the schedule of your day. As an analog astronaut or as an astronaut, every hour and often every minute of your day is controlled by mission control center. The reason for this is because you have actually a lot to do and to remove some of the organization time that you would need on Earth if you were living alone and living your life normally, you have somebody else that takes charge of this and optimizes your schedule for the whole day. It allows you to do much more, allows you to be much more efficient and also helps you in staying fit and happy. Obviously in space staying fit is extremely important, not only so that you can stay safe up there but also so that when you come back to Earth your body is not in shambles and still in a healthy state enough for you to survive in the conditions of gravity on Earth. In the analog space missions, for example, for um, my analog space mission NASA Plus One, we had a schedule starting at 6.30 in the morning, finishing at 10pm technically in the evening, but often it was uh, a bit later, because sometimes we were delayed, and it shifted all the time. We used a program or a web page that was developed by one of our astronauts, Julien Corsin, uh, called Astrolink on which we had the schedule for the whole day and the schedule for the week for each astronaut and every time we had an update the mission control center would warn us and say um, astronaut Corsa you have an update or astronaut Polly you have an update on your flight plan please do check it. We had to check everything basically you can split the day of an analog astronaut or an astronaut into scientific experiments, base maintenance eating, sports, hygiene, rest time and free time. Uh, the rest time is obviously the sleep that you need. Sleep is extremely important so it's really rare that they would cut on your sleep time. They will probably cut more on your free time if there's any problem but obviously you have to make sure that astronauts have enough free time to feel mentally okay. We had only one time during the whole mission where our sleep was interfered with is when we simulated a moonquake in our base and uh, I was really tired and the alarm started ringing at some time during the night. Uh, I evacuated the crew, each of us did the procedure as we were meant to be. Um, so some of the crew were in the airlock and the others were in the toilet. Uh, because this is where the safe places in case of a moonquake and we had communication and then the base engineer astronaut Lismore and I were doing a tour of the base to analyze if there were any cracks everywhere if it were safe for us to come back in um, so quite interesting but because I was so tired I only realized uh, once I was in the airlock with astronaut Lismore that it was 2.37 in the morning and it took us over an hour to put on the spacesuits to protect us against any leaks of oxygen and stones. Obviously it was a lunar base on Earth, so there was no risk, but it's obviously part of the simulation. So it took us time to put the spacesuit, uh, do the analysis, transmit our report to Mission Control Center, and once they had validated that we were safe, bring the astronauts back in. Uh, it's a quite fun experiment and they gave us 15 minutes extra sleep in the morning although we had last one hour so in the evening we were quite tired but we had planned a long free time on that day it was uh, normally day six of the mission um, so it was it was fine but we were not in the mood to party on that evening because we were so tired from the lack of sleep but anyway, so as mentioned, you uh, split the time uh, depending on base, uh, maintenance, sports, etc, etc. Sports, we talked about it, obviously extremely important. Uh, extremely important because it makes you feel happy usually. I mean, some people don't like really sports, but it's obviously an endorphin generator. Uh, keeps your muscles from falling apart, keeps your bones from falling apart quite a lot. Uh, we realize that when you have um, high tension in the muscle, it actually creates a tension on your bones and this stimulates growth, right? And when you're in space, the lack of gravity, the lack of shocks that we experiment every day on Earth, um, do you like leads to a loss in bone mass. To counteract this you can do obviously lots of sports. 
and the same for muscle um, loss obviously so we're trying to counteract this it means that when you come back to your earth you can still walk whereas if you were to not do sports anymore you probably even have problems just breathing um, so sports something non-negligible I don't think you can actually really skip it on one day unless there's a massive emergency but you will always have to do sports every day and we did sports every day uh, we had uh, cardio we had strength we had uh, meditation and um, yeah just stretching also to make sure we were also not too sore from our work cooking obviously an extremely important part of the of the schedule it seems dumb but cooking when you're in space or in an analog space mission is, is part of your work and the reason is because you want to maintain the crew's good health a good spirit and you obviously want them not to lose again too much muscle mass also not to take too much weight in case they can't fit in the spacesuit anymore um, in some of the first space missions, it was quite funny because um, they expected astronauts to lose weight and they were a bit worried and actually just started putting too much weight and they were like, oh actually, no, 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 start eating a bit less. And also in cooking, you have to make sure that you don't use too much portions. We had recipes uh, to follow every day uh, that were developed by a student, uh, Julie, she was amazing. She developed uh, all the tools that we needed all the food and extremely creative or vegan because on the moon we won't have cows and we won't have like that much chicken laying around so we had what we call planted chicken which is fake chicken which was actually really good and um, yeah so food every day and all each quantities were actually scanned and put again in our program Astrolink so we knew exactly how much food we had left how much we had used also did mission control center back on earth and they could advise if something there was a problem and they needed to send a shuttle of food which never happened where she had extra snacks on the, on the last day um, so food sports scientific experiments uh, obviously scientific experiments are a large part of space exploration and of analog space missions um, in space exploration it's often the lack of gravity that we test and how we can test some um, devices to be used on the moon and Mars, like how complicated are they to be implemented by, for example, non-scientists or scientists who did not develop this experiment, or yes, how, how fit it is with the local soil, you know, like can we 3D print lunar soil, for example. When you do an analog space mission, you can test things more about, again, the scientific aspect, like how feasible it is, and how much material do we need, because when you're in laboratory conditions, it's very different than when you're in non-laboratory conditions, right? The temperature is not necessarily constant, you, the humidity is often different, people are not necessarily as much at ease. And you have to simplify the experiments to make this happen. Uh, we had an experiment that took much more time than planned because we did not have the same tools. So we were filtrating some soil, trying to remove perchlorate from soil, which is an element that you find in Martian soil, which makes it unfit for agriculture, so you need to remove it. So we're trying to filtrate it and wash it and, you know, extract it and we were measuring the pH, but between not having the right equipment and not having the similar equipment to that on the earth, we actually took, I think, twice the time allocated for it, which meant that our flight plan got modified, I think, at least five or six times that day. Um, it was a long day, we were extremely proud and happy when finished because it was a very important experiment and uh, we still got to do our sports, we still managed to eat and yeah, uh, Mission Control Centre were extremely flexible and amazing on this. Now obviously free time, it's just a phone call to your family or photos and reading a book, uh, it's important for your mental health. It's sometimes in space I think they don't want to give you too much of it either because that's when you start thinking I'm a, a tin can not too far from death <laughs> and you shouldn't be thinking about this too much you should just be enjoying the view and think about the amazing things you do. And an analog space mission is the same you, you are locked somewhere right so it's nice if you are aware of it but not too much either. So the best is to spend time with your loved ones on the phone or on video, whatever you want to do. Also be a bit creative, maybe photography for example, uh, if you find figure about Tomar Biscay. And uh, rest, obviously, uh, very important. You need to be fresh, you need to not do any mistakes, so if you do mistakes they need not to be too big so that you're not putting anyone at risk. 
Nanog space missions, obviously we have a bit more Minerva, uh, but if, for example, your Nanog space mission is uh, on the water, then it is very dangerous, right? So make sure that your head is not too deep mm -hmm. and uh, focus, all right? Now, one thing that you might think, okay, well, all of this I might have maybe at work. You don't have as much base maintenance as in analog space mission or in space missions. Uh, base maintenance is a really big part of your schedule, sadly, um, because it's an extreme environment. It's an environment that's not maintained by anyone else but you. You can call the electrician on Earth, you can call a plumber, or you might be the plumber, but when you're in space or when you're in a locked environment, you have to do the plumbing, you have to be the electrician, you have to be the cook, you have to be the mason, you have to be whatever it is, right? Or you need to be the hands of a plumber on Earth that is then guiding you by mission control center communications. So this is a really large part of your time, and for us, it started from day one. We had to find ways to find soap because we're missing soap. We had to like invent soap. We had problems with the plumbing. We had problems with the water. We had problems with the electricity. Uh, we had the problem with the humidity. It was problems everywhere basically, but it was fascinating and it was an amazing time too. Yeah, so you communicate, okay, we have a problem, talk with Mission Control Center, talk between us, allocate tasks to each of us, and then solve the problem. And in space, it's often about repairing your space toilet. So <laughs> we we had a um, space toilet uh, emergency. Uh, we were doing an extravehicular activity, so we went out of the base. And when we went out, we saw that our toilet, which is next to the airlock, seemed to be leaking. There was a liquid coming out of the toilet, and we did not know what that was. And we had to take a sample out and try to find out what it was. And the first three days we were insured, and it's only when we left the base at the end of the mission that we realized there had been a leak. Um, we did not need to repair it, but we had to <laughs> have a look at it. So yeah, this is your schedule as an analog astronaut. Um, experiments, base maintenance, food, sports, um, so many, many things that make your life so wonderful. and. Knowing that everything you do contributes to the crew's well-being, to the well-being of the mission, the well-being of experiments that will then help humanity is actually really fascinating and super cool. Um, I must say that I love the schedule of an analog astronaut and of an astronaut. And some people have to keep this for, for months. Uh, they usually don't have like a weekends or full days of rest. But when somebody organizes it for you, it actually makes it way easier. And knowing that somebody on Earth is clapping for you, that you finish your bowl of rice or whatever you ate, is actually pretty cool because everything you do is, is good. I hope you enjoyed this video and happy flight plan planning. Hopefully it makes a little difference to your life or maybe you're thankful that you don't have to repair your space toilet.